I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about centering in CSS, responsive image light boxes, and more. Let's check it out. First up, over on the CSS Tricks blog, there's an excellent post about centering things in CSS. If That's pretty easy, right? It's actually a little bit complicated, or more complicated than you would think it would need to be. You just put, put in the center tag, and you're done, right? That's how that works. Oh. I don't know. The blog post is called Centering in CSS, a Complete Guide, and it is very complete as it is described. Uh, there's horizontally, vertically, both horizontally and vertically. So it's kind of like a little quiz on Facebook. You know, you pick uh, a little the BuzzFeed one, quiz. You pick the one you want. Okay, I'm 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 feeling horizontal here, and then uh, is it a block level element? Yeah. Well, then you're gonna want to do this thing here. The one I want to point out is both horizontally and vertically. So if you want something right in the middle of the screen, in the center, both horizontally and vertically, you got a couple of choices. You could do it as something that's fixed width and height. So if you have an element that's of fixed width and height, you can do something like this, where you say position absolute, and the top and left are at 50%, and you're going to get something like this. And you have nice examples from CodePen, so you can look at the CSS and see, oh, it's exactly as described. And then the other one that's really good is Flexbox. So if you can use Flexbox, if the browsers that you're targeting have support for Flexbox, it's actually really simple. You just say display flex, and then you justify content center, and you align item center, and you get something that looks exactly the same as we were looking at before. So pretty cool guide. Definitely be sure to check this out. It shouldn't be too difficult to center things in CSS if you just kind of follow the instructions and do it properly. Flexbox is great. It is. It's almost like we have to do a lot less work when we use modern tools. It is. Very true. Next up, we have a project called turnbox.js. This gives you really, really nice uh, 3D transformations for different elements on your site. Now, the examples that they have are for doing a toggle, like let's say you're using a checkbox. You can just toggle that on and off. And look at that transformation. Wow, are we in a web page or in a 3D video game that simulates a web page? Uh, here is an example of a confirmation box. Go ahead and click that, and then you can either click or tap, cancel, or OK. And this works for a bunch of different elements. They have examples for uploaders that would show you the progress of the item being uploaded, and even for different tabs within a page. And look at that, we've got two different 3D transformations at once. And they also have examples for radio boxes and check boxes where you can have several elements doing this at a time. Now this is actually very, very easy to use as are most things that we talk about on this show. Just include jQuery in your web page, which you probably are doing already. And then also include turnbox.js, one line right there. And then once you are doing that, you are pretty well good to go. Just have a div and then more divs below that. Give it the selector that you want to use and call the turnbox method on it. Now it supports a bunch of different options as do everything that we pretty much feature on the show that is a JavaScript plugin. So you can define the perspective and the duration uh, as well as the delay and certain other CSS transitions and transformations, the easing. Now this uses the translate 3D function if the browser supports it. Uh, it does not completely have a fallback, but it does use CSS3. Anyway, check it out. We'll have a link right below the video here in the show notes. Very cool stuff. Well, next up is dynamic physics animations. This is really cool. If you've used iOS 7 or 8 at all, you've probably seen something similar to this, and now you can do it on the web. So let's take a look at guides here. Uh, this is called Impulse, by the way. We'll take a look at the Impulse guides. And if we scroll down here, we have a couple of examples. Oh, actually, it's over here. So we'll go to basics. And you can do things like springing. So I'll say 
start here. And you kind of get this nice animation where there's some easing and you know, kind of a certain amount of tension. And you can actually define those things. So tension is 100, damping is 10, and you kind of say where you want it to start and end. And I feel a certain amount of tension too. You get something that looks like this. There's also accelerating. So if you want something to accelerate as it's moving or feel the tension accelerating. Decelerate. Can't make a joke about that one. I feel the joke's decelerating. <laughs> oh, I see you've watched the Treehouse show. <laughs> uh, there's also several other of these. There's chaining. I think if we go back to the top here, we can see all of them. Uh, let's go to animating other properties. So if there's other things you want to animate other than movement, such as scaling, you can do things like that. This is a pretty cool library because it would actually take quite a bit of work to do some of these things. And you can actually use these ideas to build up more complex features. So if we go over to the examples here, we were looking at guides, but if we're in examples, you can do things like you've seen on phones. So uh, we could have something like a pull down menu. So we can drag down there and you see how it kind of bounces. This works a little bit better on mobile, but you can still check it out on desktop. And if I kind of drag the speed at which I drag the cursor or my finger will kind of determine how much it actually bounces. Let's see if I can get it to bounce again there. Oh. Trust me, it works. There's also inertial scrolling. You may not necessarily want to do that because on a lot of phone platforms, they already have really good scrolling, but it is available to you if you want to do it. There's sort, sort of this origami, or origami cover where it kind of scrunches up. So that's kind of cool. And you see, again, it bounces there depending on how fast you kind of swipe it. So, Anyway, really cool stuff. This would be pretty complicated to try to implement on your own. So definitely be sure to check out Impulse. All right. Well, I, will be, I will impulsively check that out in the middle of something. Next up, we have a project called Strip. This is a responsive light box. Now, what in the world does that mean? Well, uh, you'll see a light box on a web page. You're probably familiar with this. You click an image, and then it will zoom the image and make it full screen. But that doesn't always work very well with larger screens. So Strip takes a different take on that. You can click on the image, and then it will come out from the right or left side of the screen. And this allows you to continue to interact with the web page while the image is shown. Now, this is also responsive. So if I exit my browser from full screen here, you can see as I am making the page smaller, the image resizes accordingly. Now, Strip is pretty easy to use. We'll just go ahead and close that right here. If we click on the documentation, you can see all you have to do is include jQuery and the Strip JavaScript and CSS. And that is pretty much all you need to do. Just add a class of Strip to your image, and you are good to go. Now, you can also add a caption to it by adding a data attribute for the strip caption, and then the caption will appear below the image. You can also create different groups of images, and that will make these arrows appear, and you can either click or tap them to go back and forth through all of the different images. Now, we can go ahead and check out the options that are allowed. You have callbacks to have when the image is shown or hidden. And you can use a few different effects. You can use a spinner, transition, and also have a window and a UI. Anyway, Strip is very easy to use, especially if you are looking for a responsive image lightbox solution. Definitely check it out. Very cool stuff. Well, next up, we have a drawer menu, kind of app style. And it uses CSS and jQuery. So if we click open, whoa, look what? at that. Wow. It's over on the right position. If we click left, it's over on the left. What? And you can even do this responsively. So we've seen this kind of thing before. Uh, nothing particularly special about this one. It's just 
really well done. There's responsive uh, left and right, as we just mentioned, and it's pretty easy to install. You just link the required files, which is drawer, which is this project is called drawer.min.css, and then you need to include jQuery and iScroll, this little library right here, and then the drawer JavaScript file. So fairly easy. Then you have some HTML markup to actually build out the drawer. So you put your contents right here, and then you have things like a hamburger menu. Uh, you have a creative spelling of hamburger there, or perhaps that's maybe a, a non-American spelling I'm not familiar with. And then there is the... Either way, it makes me hungry. It, it is pretty delicious sounding. Then you call the drawer with a little bit of jQuery here. So you select the drawer class right there, and then you call the drawer function on it. And there's a little bit of different markup for the left position and right position. And then, of course, there's also some API methods. So you can open it, close it, toggle it, or completely destroy it if you just really hate it and you're just really done with it. You can just destroy it. Smash it. Yep. So I think that's all we have time for this week. I am at NickRP on Twitter. And I am at Jay Cipher. For more information on anything we talked about, there should be links below the video. Feel free to explore them at will. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next week. Thank you.